There's a quote that I like from Bruce Lee, there's no such thing as maturity, but only the ongoing process of maturation. That quote does a good job of answering this how I built my filmmaking career topic because it's not about building a career, it's not about having a successful career, but it's more about it's an ongoing process of building. I'm Michael, a Taiwan-based cinematographer, DP, and filmmaker. In this video, we're gonna talk about how I built my filmmaking career. I was actually pretty late to start in this industry. I had used a camera ever since I was around 10 years old, but it took a good 20 years later until I realized that I could actually build a career in filmmaking. And that's what I've been doing for the past almost 10 years. I would say I was around 28 when I started my filmmaking career. At the time, I actually wanted to open a gym. And how I pivoted from fitness into full-time filmmaking was I met an Olympic gymnast in Los Angeles. His name is Brandon Wynn. He had me create some fitness content for him. And I made a video for him. It was a short video, but Surprisingly, within 24 hours, it reached 40,000 people. At the time, I, th I thought to myself, if I was to open a gym, how long would it take me to reach 40,000 people? And through this video, I actually reached 40,000 people in less than one day. That's when my eyes really opened up to the potential of video. At that time, I had already done some very small video gigs. I remember starting out, I did a lot of free work and I also did a lot of videos for $200. Um, I shot some music videos, I shot some fitness videos. I didn't know how much my videos were worth. And at the time, I had very minimal equipment. I would say the equipment is not important. It's more about your skill set and your experience. And if you feel confident charging more than $200, or if you don't feel comfortable charging $200, I would highly recommend you trust your gut, but also do your research. You wanna understand your location, your client demands, who you're working with. I would say your location is very important because for me, I started out on the west coast of the United States, mostly in California and also in Oregon. Then I left America, I've been living in Taiwan for the past seven years, and obviously, definitely do your research. What are fair rates for your area and for the type of work that you wanna do? When I moved to Taiwan, I had basically zero connections in the industry. So my first month in Taiwan, I had really had to force myself to be an extrovert and I reached out to a lot of people. I had to put myself out there. And even though Chinese is not my first language, there is a language barrier even to this day for me to communicate with clients. I would say I'm quite lucky because my first month of Taiwan, I actually got quite a bit of traction. I met a highly talented filmmaker in the space, Kaylee. And the next day upon meeting him, he invited me onto a music video set. Another really important contact that I made was to a supplement company in Taiwan. I did some spec work for them and they didn't really pay me initially, but three years later, they gave me a bigger budget commercial, which I'm actually quite proud of and is quite successful because it's reached over 2 million people and it's also currently still being pushed on YouTube. So back to the subject and the topic of this video, how I built my filmmaking career, I don't want to sound pretentious and come off as someone who feels successful. And actually, the last half of this year, I've been quite hard on myself and quite negative and overly critical of my work. It's unavoidable to have failures in your journey, no matter what you're doing. It's all about perspective. You know, you can focus on the mistakes that you've made or you can focus on your successes. I've been doing this for many years and I haven't backed down per se and I haven't really pivoted away from this. I guess what I'm trying to say is to, to encourage you to not be afraid to put yourself out there no matter what you want to do. As long as you consistently put in the work over the years, I've seen results. And I'll continue to see results as I continue putting in consistent effort. Now something that a lot of filmmakers talk about is finding your niche. And that's something that I've yet to do, but I would say the closest thing to a niche for me is documentary filmmaking because those have been my most longest lasting clients is through documentary work. Other types of work that people will talk about are narrative and commercial work. I would say those are the main three
I've tried a lot of different types of film. That's initially what really pulled me into filmmaking was the opportunity to work in so many different industries. You don't have to be a commercial filmmaker. You don't have to be a documentary filmmaker. You can not worry about the final destination, but kind of take projects as they come. And don't be afraid to invest in your passion projects to explore the areas that you want to get work in. So did I answer the question of how I built my filmmaking career? It's not an easy question. It's something that I'm constantly working on and I'll continue working on for years to come. But I would say I built the majority of my filmmaking career through documentary work. I did music videos for a couple of years, filmed a lot of events as well, weddings, Another thing that I'm doing right now at this moment to build my filmmaking career is to put myself out there, be vulnerable on YouTube, to create content. I think that's really important and unavoidable in this day and age that you have an online presence. And even though I recently deleted Instagram from my phone, I know other people who also have decided to not use Instagram. I think it can be tricky to use social media to balance, to have a healthy balance because a lot of times on social media, all we see are the positive successes. It can be easy to look at all these successes and not know about the other side, of, you know, the failures and all the tribulations and all the challenges that we've had to overcome in not just the creative industry. As I'm not doing Instagram, I wanna at least put in some effort and use my cameras and keep my skills as sharp as possible during my downtime between my freelance jobs. It's the end of the year now, and when I look back on this year, like I said, I was actually in quite a dark place. This last half of the year, really wanting to just quit, <laughs> just make some bad decisions, but when I think back on this year logically, I was able to travel multiple times for filmmaking, documentary work. Brazil, I traveled to Germany for esports documentary work and I filmed some commercials. I had a four-day commercial shoot at a local school, which I'm quite proud of. I know the end result will be high quality. I filmed a lot with Kaylee. We just wrapped a six-day blockchain event filming. We've also filmed a lot of other marketing content, fitness related and shooting a lot of vertical content as well. All in all, I feel like this year was quite successful. Definitely am continuing to build my filmmaking career with the help of this YouTube channel moving forward as I consistently upload content. I hope that hearing a little bit about my journey through filmmaking can help you in yours. And thanks for subscribing. I know that a lot of you have subscribed to my channel and are also filmmakers. So I really want to express that I'm thankful that we can continue to become better filmmakers, learn from each other's mistakes and continue to grow the industry so that more people can understand the value behind filmmaking and the business side of filmmaking. It's not just about art, even though a lot of times I want it to be about art, but it's also equally as important to understand the business side and how valuable our films are to businesses.